Uh, yes, uh, welcome in the session. Uh, I'm Mr. Emmanuel Charles from Educare, Tanzania. Uh, my dear students, today I want to share with you in English language. That is language one, a level. Uh, today now let us see translation and interpretation. This is the new topics. Uh, that is translation and interpretation. Uh, maybe before let me give one introduction so that everybody of you can be can be briefs having the retro idea about translation and interpretation. Uh, when we are talking about translation and interpretation, this means translation, this uh, is the situation or it is a process of turning uh, the meaning of one language into the meaning of another language into a uh, different language in case of written form. Maybe you can translate or you can change the, the language of one text into the another language into other text example you can translate english books into swahili books whereby now you, you you translate it through written form but when we are talking about interpretation now this is it is the opposite of translation because interpretation it is a process uh, of interpreting the message that is given in oral form whereby now someone can be speaking english and another person interpret that language into another language that is the we can say it is a source language and the target language here now when we are talking about the source language it is the origin of the language but the target language now it is uh, it is a message after being interpreted so that now the audience can understand. So when now the audience will understand the message spoken by the first speaker, that is now what we call the target language. So when now you change one language into another language, that is the interpretation in case of written form. But when you change one language into another language, in case of oral presentation, that is what we call interpretation, my dear students. Uh, now, today, let us see now what is translation and what is interpretation. Uh, so, here now, translation is the process by which idea that are written in one language are represented by words of another language. So, if the, the ideas is written in one language, like take the example, maybe language is, is, is English language or written in French. And then you change that idea that is written in French language and then now you change it into the English language now. But in case of written form, that is what we call translation. But if the language is turned from maybe the English language into the French language, in case of oral presentation, uh, you find that maybe you can find there is uh, maybe the the, the presenter and the audience. So the presenter maybe is a French and the audience now are uh, Englishman. So the Englishman automatically now they will need a person to translate. That is whom we call the translator. So the translator now he will use, he, he, can, he cannot use, he, in, he, he cannot translate the language in case of in case of written form, in, ca in case of sp spoken form. This translation now will, be, will change from the and one language to another language, but in case of written form. But here at the, at the interpretation, that is, it is the opposite of translation. You will change it into the oral form. So here now, uh, according to the definition, uh, it is a process by which ideas that are written in one language are represented by words of another language. Or is a process whereby the meaning of, of one expression or of one expression in one language is signed into meaning of another language but this is or it is it is presented in term of written form uh, then now here now nb to consider something to consider here uh, you can say now the language from which the information is taken is known as a source language a source language this means Example, you can take these two groups of people. Uh, example, one group is uh, a Swahili speaker and the another group is uh, maybe English speaker. So now, when the English speaker is speaking, automatically this Swahili speaker group, they won't understand. So now, if a language now is translated from English to Swahili, so that is what we call now translation. 
uh, but in case of written form. So now, when the language is turned from the English language to Swahili, to Swahili language, uh, so the language that has been turned from the, the English language to the Swahili language, so the English language that is what we call the source language. And the Swahili language now, it will, it will be called the target language, but because the focus it to, is to make this group of the Swahili speaker who didn't know the meaning of English language so that they can be capable to understand what is presented in English in English language. So that is will be called the target language. So here now my dear students, uh, uh, the language from which the information is taken is known as the source language as, as I have explained. And then uh, we present it in SL. And then now, and the one into which the meaning is turned is known as a target language. A target language of which means now. Uh, now this means the target language which means that the source language automatically they know the language. So the target language it is to make those people to be capable now of the language that for the first time they didn't know even the meaning or to use it. So that is all about it, translation. So here now, example, we could use this simple example or one example so that we can be familiar. So, example, the source language, it is English language. And the target language here have used Swahili example. That is, uh, I wish you all the best. You can say, I wish you all the best, my dear student, with the exams. I wish you all journey. I wish you Merry Christmas. And then here, the target language is in Kiswahili now. You will say, Nakutakia Kiara Heri, in terms of, in case of saying, I wish you all the best. So, this, this, I wish you all the best now, it is English language. But, Nakutakia Kiara Heri, that is Kiswahili language. Uh, so now here, it is uh, Kiswahili language, it is the target language, and the, and the uh, SL now, that is the source language. Uh, so here now, my dear student, when we are talking about translation, we are considering the two sides, of which now one side know this language, and this side know another language, of which now this language to be understood for everybody or to be capable, they should be translated or turning the message into the respective language so that the member of that language they can be aware with what has been spoken or has been presented in a particular meeting or a particular summit. Uh, thank you for listening now. Let us see now after looking translation. So let us see another term that is interpretation. Uh, the interpretation, I can say it is the opposite of translation. Uh, when we are talking about interpretation now, or we are talking about the changing of language or the changing of the message from one person to another person through spoken form. But uh, translation, it is changing of language from uh, one language into another language in case of written form. Like here we have used this example. I wish you all the best. Then you turn this, I wish you all the best into the target language. Maybe now the Swahili speaker, now, you, you write. But here, it is in terms of oral presentation. The like example, uh, let, let me give you the meaning of interpretation, then I will give you an example. Example, uh, like here, interpretation is the process that involves the tra transfer of message from one language to another to another in, in form of speech. Uh, in form of speech or in case of conversation or, of, or oral presentation, that is what we call the speech. Uh, now, the speech can be the conversation of the particular group that people who are sharing the same culture and they are living in the same geographical location and they have their history. Uh, so here now, or another in form of speech, or you could say, it involves one person speaking in one language and another person give the message in to another language. So now, example, I will use this example here. Uh, example, the source language and the target language. That is, I wish you all the best. That is the source language. Maybe the, the interpreter now, he will use the language of mouth or spoken, spoken language to interpret the message, but not in case of written form, as they have said in, and in case of translation. In translation, I have written an example, but here I have not written an example because here now it uses the word of mouth. Uh, example, uh, maybe a person can speak maybe, uh, next month I will visit to Europe, 
Next month, I will visit to Europe. That is English language. So now the Swahili speaker, they, won't un they don't understand what is the next month I will visit to Europe. So now the interpreter will come up and to give out the meaning. Maybe, mwezi ujao, mtaenda ulaya. So in case of writing form, he used only the word of mouth so that now the Swahili speaker, they can understand. That is what we call interpretation. So interpretation, you change the message from one language to another language, but in case of the word of mouth or, or presentation, or in case of speech. Compared now, that is quite, has, it has the slight difference because here it involves written form and this one it involves uh, the spoken form. But all of them, they are all involving in turning one language into another language. But here it involves written form and here it involves the oral presentation. Uh, that is all about uh, interpretation. So now that is you can see now the difference between translation and interpretation. The difference between is the first you can the first difference you can say it differ in case of presentation because this is presented in case of written form and this is presented in case of of the form of the, of, of speech. So of which now the speech and. Uh, and the written form, it would make it to differ from translation, from interpretation. Thank you, my dear student, for listening. Ah, let us continue. Ah, so here now, after looking the meaning and the difference between translation and interpretation now, let us see the principle of translation. The principle of translation, or sometimes you can say, it is the peculiarities, the features of translation, of translation, or sometimes you can say, the characteristics of translation. Here now, uh, there are many, so but I have mentioned a few and then we shall see another. Uh, here, the first is, the translator has to be competent in both languages. That is the source language and the target language. Uh, my dear student, to become a good translator, you should be able to use two or more languages. So that now, you can listen in the language of the speaker. And then you can translate that language of the speaker to the audience. So that the audience now, they can, keep, they can be capable to understand what has been presented with the speaker. Uh, that is the first principle of translation. So when now you are, you, are, you are familiar or you are capable to understand the source language and the target language, so now you will become a good translator because the language that is spoken from the first speaker is the source language and the language that is spoken with the, uh, the interpreter, that is we call now the target language because this translator now, he will translate the language from the first speaker to the members or to the the audience who are listening what is has been spoken with this speaker so that now even the audience they can hear or they can understand and interpret what has been spoken with the speaker so through doing that now to be a good translator this first features is very important so that now to be competent this means you, you are competent in speaking and you have an application. It means you, are compet you have competence and performance. So that is all about it, the first point. Uh, the next point that is the translator has to understand the, the field covered by the source text. Uh, this means that if now you are a good translator, automatically you will understand the, so the field of the source language. The field of the source language, this means where does this language originated from? Example, English language. The English language according to comparative linguistics and the different perspectives, example, by, com by considering uh, one of the scholars, the Englishman, that is Ferdinand de Chajou, in his book titled the, Intro the Theory of Linguistics and the Introduction of Linguistics, he spoken that uh, the language is, the English language has been originated from the island and the United Kingdom of the US. Europe. Where now? So now, if you are capable to understand what is the, the origin of English language, that is the United Kingdom, so as you can be capable even to translate this text, because you will know that the text is written in English language. Maybe the, the setting of the text maybe is in Nigeria, maybe, example by Chinua Achebe, or maybe the text is written in Kenya, maybe by Ngungi Wathiong, maybe in Tanzania, uh, you can say by using maybe uh, this woman written in the book so-called Patched Earth. Uh, so here now, 
according to there is a different scholars. So if we will understand the, the source of the text, so now you will be capable to translate this text from the speaker to the audience. Uh, that is my dear students about point number two. Point number three, that is the translator has to consider the style used by this person who wrote the text of the source language. The translator should not go directly to the main points or to the message. He should consider even the style. What, where, what is the style? When we are talking about style, we are talking about the peculiarities, the way of presenting the ritual works. Uh, maybe you can start with the uh, maybe the first, the first, the first point, the second point, the third point, or you can start. We can use the flashback. Uh, maybe you can start at the middle, then at the end, then at the first, whatever. So, but here. When you will understand the style used by the by the the writer or the or the, the writer now, uh, that you will be able will be will be able or will, will make you will make you to simplify this works because you know the the study that it used that is used. So as now even you you will know what kind of study you should use so that you can inter interpret this literary text. Uh, point number four, my dear student, some content item in both the source language and the target language and the target language some content ah so you should understand more content the content oh you can you can find that the language that is spoken by a different speakers maybe he used the, the he used the the, the, vo, the vocabulary that is very 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 hard so that now here if the vocabulary is very hard now here you will deal with the content ah so the content this means the message uh, because the speaker can speak a lot of things, but the message is very few. So now you refer to the message, so that that the message you can turn to the into the into the listener, so that the listener can understand. Oh, the speaker has been talking about you, one, two, three, four. Or the speaker maybe has been talking about the environmental conservation or the development of language. So that is point number four, how it is about. And the point number five, the translator should consider the 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 translator should should consider. The, his or her views produce what is translated biases. So here now, the translator should consider what has been spoken with the, the speaker. So that now the translator, maybe if he will, there is biases here. If maybe the translator, he will, he will discover or he will recognize that maybe the speaker has used the, the bias language. So now the translator should consider so that he can avoid these words to be translated to the influence of the majority. So that the majority now or the audience, they can, they can be bored. So here now, that is point number five, my dear student. Uh, let us continue with now the principle of translation. Uh, my dear students, now let us continue with the principles of translation. That is point number six. Uh, the translator has to consider the expectation of the readers. Uh, here now, uh, the translator, when he is trying to translate the language, uh, he should consider the expectation of the reader. Uh, where now the reader, when he will read, he or she needs to put himself or herself on the shoe of the reader. Uh, here means uh, the translator, as he translates see, the text or the books, he should consider now uh, that there is a particular person or there is a people who are going to read that text. So now he should wear the shoe of the reader so that now, uh, as he himself or herself translates that text, he should ensure that the language that is used in that text is the language that is simple uh, and the language that is for all rules of language, grammatical, syntactical structure, and the semantics, of which now in case of semantics, uh, this will deal with the meaning. Uh, so here now, when the, the translator will consider that thing, uh, also even the reader now will enjoy because the language that will be chosen, uh, they choose all the choices of language to be used in, in, using in this translation will be the language that is understood to the target language. Uh, now, my dear students, now we are through with the principle of translation. So now here, let us see the method of translation or ways of translation. Uh, here, uh, as I have written here below, uh, the following are some of the methods of translation. 
Here I have tried to show three ways, but there are many. Uh, you will, and the, uh, others we will read for your own, but here I want to show you even at least the, the first, st the initial stage, so that you can understand it a few. Uh, words to word translation. Uh, this word to word translation, what does it mean? This is a translation method in which target language are. Uh, uh, where they are immediately below the second language. Here now, word to word translation, this is a type of translation, or this is a method of translation, whereby now the word interpreted are below of the target language from the source language. Example here, I uh, have used this example. Uh, mtoto mzuri alikura nyama yote. Uh, mtoto mzuri alikura nyama yote, this is the source language. Uh, the source language uh, and this is a target language where is now that is Swahili language and that is English language of which now the speakers of English language uh, will expect it to to write like a child the child good ate the meat all so here now that is all about word to word translation of which this word to word translation now uh, it 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 involves the translation of words from the, the, first, the first part of the sentence to, to the last or to the initial part of the sentence. That is all about word to word translation. Uh, number two is semantic translation. Semantic translation, it is all about the meaning. Uh, this is dealing with the meaning of the, the source language to the target language. Uh, this is a translation method in which the translator is said to be uh, bias to source language. He or she translates each word. Whereby now here, all words are being translated according to to the meaning. Example, but using the grammatical grammatical structure of the target language. So now here, uh, the the sentence the sentence or the meaning will be translated uh, in case of meaning by following the grammatical structure of the target language. That is example. Example, he went up to him to his home. Uh, and uh, that is the source language. This is the source language. The source language. Whereby now, uh, this is, next is the target language of which now this target language uh, you, and then you say alikuenda mpaka nyumbani kwake. So here, now uh, you see the way how words are being Translated in the case of, of this semantic translation. That is all about the meaning. Whereby now, this second part that it involves the grammatical structure of the target language compared to this one, that is the word in target language are immediately below the source language. That is are below in the source language. But this one, it involves the grammatical structure of the target language. That is semantic translation. Communicative translation now. Uh, what is communicative translation? When, when we are talking about the communicative translation, uh, this is the kind of translation that pays attention to the contextual meaning of the original text. Uh, so here now, this is the a method of translation which involves with the, uh, the meaning according to the context or the context uh, or the context or the or the environment. Uh, example, communicative translation. This is the kind of translation that pays attention to the contextual meaning of the original text. Example now, do not cry on a spirit miracle. Don't cry on a spirit miracle. So the communicative translation. Uh, in Kiswa, you can say, Magia Kimwagika, Hayazore. So here, they do not cry on, a, on, a spirit, on a spirit milk now, uh, in, the, in a contextual meaning. But in direct meaning, you can't understand what, do not, what does it mean, do not cry on a spirit milk. But the meaning of do not cry on the spirit milk, this is like a idioms of which now do not cry on the spirit milk, this means Magia Kimwagika, Hayazore. But in direct meaning, you can't get the meaning. Uh, and then a friend, in, a friend in need is a friend indeed. Uh, so even here, even you try, even even if you are, you will try to translate this meaning, it is very difficult to get the meaning of a friend in need is a friend indeed. But in Kiswahili, 
uh, there is a meaning of this one. Uh, that is, you could say, now it is, uh, that is a proverbs, idioms, and the other thing that is, sometimes it can be difficult to translate, but it is under communicative translation. Uh, this one, a friend indeed, uh, is a friend indeed. Akufai kwadhiki indeo rafiki, that is the meaning of a friend indeed, ini is a friend indeed. Uh, do not cry on a spirit milk, but uh, to the to the direct meaning, it is very difficult to get the meaning. Uh, but that is all about the communicative translation. Uh, so now, after looking at the communicative translation, let us see now the things that is very difficult to, to be translated. Uh, there is a thing that is very difficult to translate in language. The example, you can be given a tree, and then you are, then you'll be given the task. Now then translate the meaning of the tree into another language, or translate the meaning of the tree. Tell us, what is the tree? How does the tree is? How does the tree look? How does, what is the origin of the tree? Difficult to translate. That is the thing that is so difficult to translate. Example, there is a proper noun here. Uh, that is point number one. The proper noun now, uh, the name referring of, to a part, particular person. Example, you can say Yuma. So, give out the meaning of Yuma. You don't know the meaning of Yuma. You can find maybe Yuma is a female, is a female human being or is a male human being. So, the difficulty that you, you hinder, the difficulty that you encounter in translating that is what we call the thing that are difficult to, to translate in. Example here, my father lives in Imbea. What is Imbea? Mbea is a place. Eh? After being a place, what does it mean? So that has become the, the, things, the things that is very difficult in the translation. My father lives in Mbea. Yes, we know who is father. Yes, he lives in Mbea. Uh -huh. What is Mbea? Maybe Mbea is the place that is found in Tanzania, in the northern part. Uh, maybe in the, in the northern, northern part, northern south in Tanzania. But uh, yes, it is found in Tanzania. And then, what does it involve? What, why it is in Tanzania? So that is what we call now the thing that is difficult to. Uh, and then now, there is another thing that Jumbe is my friend. Yes, we know what is the friends. Uh, what is Jumbe now? Jumbe is a noun and it is a proper noun. Eh? Yes, uh, even if it is a proper noun, what does it mean? What does it symbolize? Uh, so that is uh, what we say now, the difficulties or the, the, or the, the obstacles that are ready to, to that is make people to encounter difficulties in, it, in translation. So here now, I uh, would like to wind up the session, but before to wind up the session, my dear student, I would like to lift these questions. And that is stated that, give two reasons why both translation and interpretation work together. Now you should explain why translation and the interpretation match together or work together in the, in the context of language, translation and the interpretation or in the context of language. So my dear students, thank you very much. I wish you all the best. We meet next time.